Good morning and welcome to worship on uh, June 7th. Today is um, Holy Trinity Sunday and we are actually we are going to have a sermon from our presiding bishop Elizabeth Eaton for today and I'm excited for that and so we actually this is another Sunday we're joining with even more people across our country actually in hearing um, from her today. To start worship, uh, we're going for, for, we're starting today, we're using the Unraveled series that hopefully you should have gotten in the mail. <clears throat> so I'll have words up on the screen too for most of it. Um, but that's what we're using today and I'll introduce that theme more in just a few moments. But our call to worship song is going to be song today, and it's a call and response song. You're not going to have to unmute yourselves today, but I have been um, in a week at a, a training practice space to practice singing more over Zoom. So in a couple weeks, if we're feeling sort of what we want to try it out, we might try some call and response live to hear each other's voices to start worship. Um, but for today, I have Paige helping me. So she'll, I'll sing um, one line and then we'll sing the response together. And this is a song we've done uh, before. So I'll sing a line and you sing it back. Here we go. Come, let us worship God. 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 Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. To the love of God. To the love of God. So pretty easy, even if it's not familiar. And one of the other things we practiced on there was doing actions. So especially on Zoom, then we can see that we are worshiping together. So I'm going to add actions to the, to the singing. So please follow along. Come, let us worship God. 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 Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. To the love of God. To the love of God. And if you need to feel a hug today, so maybe you're on your own or you just need to feel that squeeze, you can think about God hugging you or your family and friends from church giving you a hug. So let's do that uh, one more time. Come, let us worship God. 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 Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. To the love of God. To the love of God. Amen. So welcome to worship this morning. And so thank you, Paige. I'm going to let you yeah, head out. So I want to take a moment now to introduce more of our unraveled theme for this summer um, and what's going on behind me here. So one of, um, you'll see, this is um, the loom for an art project that we are doing. And before I go further, especially for um, some kids that we have on, in worship today, I want to talk about what the word unraveled means first. So I'm wondering if you've ever pulled like the edge of a blanket off or like I have this string, right? And I can pull these strings off or maybe a sweater you've had that you pull at and you're unraveling, you're taking off those strings from here. And <clears throat> sometimes you have a ball of yarn too that you can, when you unwind that, you're unraveling it. And sometimes in our life, our plans or our lives don't go the way that we hope they will, right? And that might cause us to feel sad or angry or upset. And in worship this summer, we are going to be reading and learning about stories where God is with us even when our plans fall apart. 
and um, this our worship space is decorated and it looks kind of messy right and it's not very neat because when our lives fall apart it's not messy it's not neat and um, each Sunday we are going to take strips of cloth and we're going to write prayers on them or even a word or even just hold on to it and we're going to be weaving them into cloth medallions and so you can take um, cloth that you have at home or you if you we have cloth that all this ready that i can write your prayers onto for you and add them to our weaving as we go and um because this we're creating something new out of these scraps, out of these strips of cloth. And it reminds us that even when things don't go as planned and we get upset, God is always there to hold us and to love us. And sometimes where we get woven back together, a lot of times is with that love that we share with our friends and our families and our church. And as I was looking at this um, today, I was also thinking about um, that for today, um, using this as a time of um, confession and prayer to God, think about what in your life does God need to unravel? Is there something going on in your life that is really hard for you or you want to give over to God, have God help you out there? So if you have cloth at home for this or you can think about something to write down later, but what in your life needs to be unraveled and as i thought about that question i was thinking about um, around our country right now right we're seeing a lot of unraveling with protests and um, fear and anger and other things and i was thinking about um so the and and the bishop eaton will talk touch on this a little bit in her sermon too that um and, and as I look at these strands of cloth, I was thinking about um, the police officers who were involved in the death of George Floyd. And sometimes we talk about them as individuals, right? As bad apples or they're sort of on their own, but they've been part of this tapestry, right? They've been part of a system that has, that needs to be unraveled, that there's a lot of people, and I know regular people, police, military, who are angry at what happened, but they're part of a system that needs some unraveling. And we're at a place right now as a country where we get to weave something new out of what's going on right now. And my hope and prayer is that we weave that with love and justice for all. And so maybe I hope that image helps you as well. It was really, it helped me a lot as I was thinking about this. Um, and so I want to end this time um, with prayer and um, yeah, just be, please pray with me. Lord, we come to you this morning on the week we start a series thinking about what has unraveled in our lives, whether it's been by our choice or not. Um, Lord, we know that you weave things together for good for those who love you. And so we Pray that in this unraveling, in the messiness, you continue to walk with us and give us vision for what beautiful thing you are going to be creating in our future. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll continue with the prayer for illumination. God of unending surprises, this life is a tapestry of moments woven together, and we long to be weavers of love. Today we gather and we pray that you would unravel our bias, unravel our assumptions, unravel whatever it is that keeps us from you. And as you do, clear space in our hearts for your word. We are listening, we are praying. Amen. And scripture this morning is coming from a few different places. We're going to start, as I said, with um, the Spark Story Bible and creation. 
So if you have your Spark Story Bible, um, we're on page two. It's the first story. <laughs> Before God created the world, there was nothing at all except God. On the first day of creation, the wind of God blew. Whoosh, whoosh, swoosh, God said. Let there be light. Crackle, boom, bang, there was light. God saw that the light was good. And as we read, you can, you can join me in that saying, it was good. Then split. God divided the light and the darkness into day and night. On the second day, God said, let there be sky. Pillow, billow, puff, there was a sky. God saw that the sky was good. On the third day, God said, let there be water and dry land. Drip, drop, kerplunk. Sorry, I need to turn off something here. It's making noise. Okay. Drip, drop, kerplunk. There was water. Look at that. And crackle, crunch, snap. There was dry land. God saw that the water and the land were what? They were good. And then God said, let there be plants and trees. Rumble, rustle, pop. There were plants and trees. And God saw that the plants and trees were good. On the fourth day, God said, let there be a sun and moon and stars. Glimmer, shimmer, shine. There was a sun and a moon and thousands of stars. God saw that the sun and the moon and the stars were good. On the fifth day, God said, let there be sea animals that swim and birds that fly. Wiggle, splish, splash. There were sea animals. Flutter, putter, tweet. There were birds. God saw that the sea animals and the birds were good. On the sixth day, God said, let there be animals of every kind on the earth. Growl, prowl, snort. There were animals with fur. Skitter, scatter, creep. There were bugs. Slither, slink, hop. There were reptiles. God saw that the animals and bugs and reptiles were, what? Good. Then God said, let there be people on earth. Blink, wink, hiccup. There were people on the earth. God saw that the people were very good. On the seventh day, God said, it is time to rest. Phew, phew, ah. God and all of creation rested. Now this is a good story to read on um, Holy Trinity Sunday. And maybe, maybe you get that, see that, maybe you don't. So if we go back to that first day of creation, when God blew whew, that spirit of God, because we talk about God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God as creator, God as in Jesus, the Savior, and as Holy Spirit. So we see creation happening here. We see the Spirit. And then in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, John talks about Jesus as the Word of God, the Word that creates. And we read in this creation story that God speaks and things are created. And so this is a story where we can see the Trinity in action together. And I want to um, think about that, that power of the word, right? When Jesus and when God speaks, things happen. And we know that our words have power too, right? Our words can build up or bring life or they can hurt people. And so I invite you to pray with me as we end that reading and end a little bit of kids' reflection time. And kids, if you want to, you can repeat after me. Dear God, 
help us to speak words that are good, words that are good, words that bring life, words that bring life, and words that share your love, and words that share your love. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. amen. Amen. And our readings um, continue. Uh, sorry, I meant to print this out and then I did not. Okay, so from Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And a reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now moving to the gospel reading, Bishop Eaton will read that um, herself. And I will share um, the video. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, 
and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath 
crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. Amen, indeed. That promise that God is with us in all of this. I realized I forgot to share what song we're going to sing now, and it's going to be Just As I Am Without One Plea. This was on the song sheet from before. I have the words I'll put up on the screen, but for those joining on the phone, this uh, you hopefully have it close at hand, four words. Um, if not, I apologize for forgetting to share that earlier. There we go. Um, the image I have up right now is that one I used last week about, and, and this works for creation too, God breathed into them, right? This reminder that we are connected to all of creation and ourselves um, and within us. All right, now, just as I am. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee.
just as I am not tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without a we continue with our affirmation of faith. I have it both on the screen and it's printed um, in your bulletin. And as we go here, you might already notice in this first line, so this is the first week we're using this, and the first line is, I believe in God, the great sower. That's how that word is said. And I can't see any of your faces to know if you're laughing at me for the alternate pronunciation. Um, <laughs> But, uh, so the God, the great sower is how we pronounce that. So please join with me in this affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the great sower, who weaves us together in community, collecting our loose ends and turning them into belonging. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who hems us in before and behind, catching us when we fall and writing us into God's holy narrative. And I believe in Jesus Christ, who loved and claimed the people society had thrown out, refusing to disregard anyone as scrap. I believe God has woven part of God's self into the fiber of our being, making us inherently worthy of love and belonging. I believe the fabric of my life is weak, that I am prone to error and need God's handiwork to remind me of love. I believe in the church and that like a quilt of different fabrics, she is designed to be as diverse and beautiful as God's creation. And I believe that when life unravels, God is there to stitch my wounds together, to hold me in the palm of God's hand, to tell me of love, and to invite me into a new journey. Amen. And as we now go to the prayers, I invite you, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and ask that you respond, hear our prayer. Trusting in your grace and mercy, we come to you, Lord, um, with all that is on our hearts and minds. God of creation, we thank you for the beautiful creation you have spoken into being. We pray that you help us to be good stewards of all that you have created, of all the waters and the land, of all the creatures that fly and swim and walk upon the land in care of one another as people created in your image. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Lord, we pray that you are with and that you bring healing and your presence to all who are in need of that this day. Lord, we pray especially for Denny and Tony, Betty and Kurt, Cindy, Sue, Ruth and Kaylee, Debbie, Bernice, Cindy, Douglas, Bill, Brian, Anthony, Mary Jo, Sam, Roger, Phyllis, and Jereen. And we pray for the family of Shirley Oldham and any others on our minds and hearts now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we pray for your spirit to come and enliven our lives, your saving presence and the word of God made flesh in Christ to guide us in the way to live our lives of justice and inclusion. We pray for that, yeah, again, that creative energy to guide our steps. And we pray, Lord, for all those farmers who are doing harvesting of hay or are figuring out planting of other crops and all those who are gardening, Lord, bless the works of their hands as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we put all of these prayers um, up into your hands and ask that you are with us in any other needs that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, unmute everyone for sharing of the peace, because that's more fun. Um, <laughs> may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also, with you. also, if you want to do that, I forgot, I should have done the peace of Christ be with you all. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put you on uh, the full screen so I can see everybody for just a moment. So it's more fun to see all the people. So, blessing and sending, and I was practicing this, I want to, I'm practicing getting close up to the camera, like, so I'm really close to actually blessing you, right? I thought that was kind of cool. So receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing else in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. May God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. And go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.